All right, welcome back to the RRP TV. We're here in East London with Richie Ahmed. Um, this is a new feature uh, behind the headphones, looking at the artist himself and the inner workings. Hi, uh, Richie, how's it going, mate? I'm good, mate. How are you doing, pal? I'm not too bad. Thanks for having us over here. Yeah, no problem, mate. We've got some setup here, haven't you? <laughs> so I thought, let's, let's start with the easy stuff. Um, so what what got you into music? Was it was there a penny drop moment? Were you at some illegal rave? What what was? How did you know you wanted to get into electronic music? Pizza raven. Um, uh, we went. Uh, we used to go on lads' holidays. Like the first couple, of years, it was because um, years and years ago, like a pizza uncut thing. We're like, oh, we're not going to pizza. Looks crap there. We were going to some mad places like Falarak, you know, like lads' holidays. And I don't know why we bothered. And then we we just went to pizza, gave in to it. And we're like, oh my god, man, this is like the business, you know. This and is it the was life. like two two thousand one, I think, the first time I went. And uh, that after that, I was just like, this is amazing. So we'll go back every year, and then we will start going loads of times in the year. And then, then basically, I came back one summer, and uh, I just graduated. I got a good job, and uh, I got back. And you know, when you get holiday blues, you know, you're sick of your life. I went into work, I was sick as fuck, and. Um, and then he just went, he goes, oh, look, we're shutting the Northern office. You've got a job in London. Um, but I wasn't ready to move to London You at the time. And he went, oh, you can take three months severance and get yourself away now. And I was just like, definitely, I'm Easy off. decision. And I just <laughs> went back to Ibiza. So that what was, was that? Were you doing like seasons over there? Or was it just flying in and out? And no, no, that year I stayed the whole, like, I mean, it was like probably July anyway. And then I just went back to like October. And been going ever since. And then that was it. I that was me. Well, job. obviously, so um, Paradise uh, and Hot Creations. You've been mm. sort of at the driving force mm. of that with like Jamie, Jamie, yep. Lee Foss. Has that? How important has that been to your career as well? And well, massively, you, like integral. In fact, the main reason, really. I mean, uh, I met Jamie. I met Jamie that year when I went back in two thousand and four, um, and. He was just a, a, a rave, a DJ, always knew what he wanted to do. I didn't even consider being a DJ back then, you know. I was just going over, working with me pals, and that world just up to all sorts, and, you know. It was like, I was never... Yeah, back then, you know, no one was a DJ. It was like, there was only Jamie out of the crew that we, that was a DJ in Hector. That was like something you could say, he's doing something, you know. And even then, when I first met Jamie, he was working in Kenya and crappy little bars, <laughs> just like for nothing, 50 quid. But he was like focused. I, I even went to him like a bit of a joke when I first met him. And I was going, oh, that's what you do. He goes, oh, I'm a DJ. Um, and, I, and I went, oh, but what else do you do? He went, no, that's it. I'm just going to be a DJ. I want, I want so you had that drive. The, yeah, completely. He, 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 he didn't say I want to be one of the biggest DJs. He goes, but I want, like, I'm going to do this for, for the rest of my life. And, and I literally like sort of like, well, not a fair play, mate, but like sort of condescendingly yeah. thought like, why I? You know, because <laughs> back, back then there was no beat port. There was no... There was no like people making stuff on Ableton, you know. And now everyone you know is a DJ or making tunes. You had to actually like have a studio to make so tunes. Any, I think he made his first music on like a PlayStation game or something. And um, and when we first heard his track Amazon and DC Ten, you know, we all all together. Them two thousand and four to two thousand six, we never missed one. DC 10 or space, we used to go to space till 7 in the morning and go straight to DC 10, stay there at like 3 in the afternoon, come back, get changed, stop up and then go back all day and it was just like, we never missed it, we are just like ravers, you know, the, I never even seen the backstage of like DC 10 till the first four years, do you know what I mean? It's do like, you, so do you think, I like, there's, for me, there's quite a common sort of thread which is uh, DJs that have been to Ibiza, done the seasons there, they've actually for me they've actually put in the graft the graft like mate. now the now graft. people go well why am I not making it why am I not doing this but if you, the common theme for me is that if you've gone through and lived yeah, it's almost lived in the trenches man. lived in yeah, the bedroom massively lived mate in, massively mate like, like some people go now and they're like they get straight backstage or they're like you know they know a DJ or they've made it true and it gets played it's like in you know, like they don't. Some people are going. I've never been to San An. I'm like, you've never been in the English. I'm like, you've never been to San An, mate. What are you jo talking <laughs> about, man? We've been in that graph. Like to be honest, because we just went as ravers. There was no perspective of like, 
oh, I'm, go- I'm going to do something with this. I just went as a rave. I loved the music, loved the scene. Yeah, lo- just loved just going out, going. Lo- Back then it was different. It was something totally new. Do you know what I mean? It was like you weren't spelled, you earned your, you earned your stripes. You know what I mean? And it was like, I remember like, even being with Jamie and stuff like, um, one of our friends, Sarah, was going out with, with she's married to him now, Johannes, who run like the um, cocoon. cocoon, yeah? And we'd be like, just little San and Rats, you know what I mean? Waiting outside like the cocoon after party, the whole for might get in, she'd be back and go like, Look, I'm working on it now. And we'd be like, literally just hope more, get in, just begging, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. And it was mad, like, because like a couple of years later, well, Jamie was like, you know, they were booking him. It was like, happened that quick for him. And then, um, I mean, in a few years after that, it happened for me, you know what I mean? It was strange to like, that's the thing with me, and I think Paradise, it's very a relatable party, do you know? Like, um, well, I remember for me, it was one of the fir- the first time I went to Ibiza. That was the we went for Paradise closing, mm-hmm. and I think it was you and Jamie playing back to back in the main room. Mm-hmm. It was one of the, it was absolutely rammed, and you know when you go to a festival and you, you start at one point in the crowd and you, you've not moved anywhere, but you end up in another corner. Yeah, it's one another of those, corner. But I remember us all walking out, and like, it was a it was. For me, one of the gigs that started to change things for me as well, where yeah. at this point, as just a little intern running around warehouse project and doing yeah. stuff like that. But that's where I was at, you know what, I'll give this a crack myself and try and, yeah, try man, and get totally. into music. Like back then in DC 10, man, like people think it's busy now. It was so berserk it did DC 10. Then it was a lot smaller. It was when it had no roof and it was a... Um, there was a bar in the middle of the terrace, you know, and it was so rammed, like, you know, like, it was dangerous at one point, you know, like, sometimes you're like, you know, the chew, like a wicked chew went off and you put your hands in there. Punch your head. You literally, <laughs> no, you literally couldn't get your hand back down. It was just like, like trying to get it like, in and, like back down. I was thinking, this is mental. Like what, what you're actually doing. Like, <laughs> you're just getting in a sway of like people that was like, but it was just, you just loved it, man. You were young. You didn't care. You didn't know any better. You know what I mean? It's like, when you've when you've done something and you get a customer a certain thing, going backwards is like, oh, I'm not doing that. But like, if you just don't know any better, that's that's the 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 more honesty in it. You know what yeah. I mean? You're just going for the tunes and the and dancing. You're there for what? It counts. Not, it's not business. Yeah, techno, yeah, and you're not that. like people like people now just want to get in the booth and shit. Like the booth was half empty then. Like yeah. it, it was never busy. Like people now you just go get and get like the, they spend the whole night on a camera or trying to get in the booth and you just think like. So you're for, missing the point for you me know? right what, my favorite club in the uk is sub club it's my um, favorite club as well the, the, like the my first time club. i ever went there i was like where where the fuck's the dj because yeah. it's that dark it's the dark room you don't look you got that wall of speakers Amazing. and that that for me i remember i wrote my dissertation on and i was reading all this stuff about dance music and it was always the dj shouldn't be on a pedestal the dj was there to play other yep. people's tunes tunes do you completely. think that music's moving away from that what's your what's your thoughts on that yeah yeah it? i do i mean um i for going back to sub club it's my favorite club by far best small club in the world and definitely my favorite club in the uk i do my own party there a lot i do all night and i do a four three two party all night and i took like about 30 people down scream everyone come down and a lot of like the girls and like, the lads that come down that hadn't been there and some of the crew are a bit older now and you know that i went there's no back bit you know there's no, the booth's tiny there's like no one in the booth they'll go like yeah, yeah, sound, but you could see them thinking, oh, no, like, it's going to be intense in here, but they were all going mental. You, they wouldn't have even... Th- th- no ev- one wanted to come with them, just, like, smashing the single. This club is unbelievable. Everyone, every, everyone's got a funny story from Sub Club, yeah, haven't they? Amazing. I remember the, the, the second time we went up there, my mate had a broken leg, and he got crowd surfed out of the out of there with his leg in a cast, and he had his crutches in the air, and he got crowd surfed out. I think mean, that was Jack it? Master. It's like, a, it's like a scene off Braveheart, isn't it? Like yeah. by eleven thirty or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like unbelievable. You're still doing parties because you've got your four thirty two label. Yeah. yeah, is that the no parties on that? Just strictly no, 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 music? No, no, are you no, asking? No, I do. Where really the parties been wicked for four thirty two. I mean, they started off just meant to be like small venues that's what doing yeah. sub club maybe like four or five hundred max capacity just me all night that was the crack you know and but they got so successful so quick that people wanted them so yeah so them. like the management like well the next thing i knew i was doing pretty that's the e1 i've done e1 but then i've do, I done him in, in bristol um motion motion you know there's me in the main room all night yeah. so they went up to like 1200 1300 people straight away which wasn't the the plan, but like I say, if 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 you've got the 
if you've got people wanting to come you, you so then i started booking guests and i've had some really cool guests really and every party's been like amazing actually to be honest so they get a really good mix of people as well you know what and, uh, sort what sort of sounds are you going for i guess it reflects the music that's coming out on the label but yeah. could you want to talk us through some of that what you've got coming up with that and how well for me like four three two people say like yeah what's the the vibe and i'll just say like all i want to put tunes out is just good music something that i'm going to play in 10 yeah. 15 years time and i'll not regret it you know what i mean and hopefully well i haven't regretted anything so far and you know so if you look at like the releases it's you know how james solace do uh, do a really cool like more of an electronic thing mine's a house one that says you a garage it's all each one of them is like different but what i would play there's so no no one style no it's i, I what put works. a trip hop ep yeah. out as long and i just get a remix for it you know what i mean it's like and it's just yeah it's just i like all different types of music so i've when people send us stuff we'll go what's like i don't know if it's available look if i, if I like it, it i'll like put it, it out uh, uh, i became a big dj before i'd done this and i moved didn't move away from our christians i'm still part of it but i'd done this so Hot Christians is a big machine, you know what I mean? It's got uh, every track's like big, you know, like it's got its eye on it being big. Whereas I wanted to do something where I didn't give a shit of it. it they have been selling really well, yeah. actually, but I didn't give a shit if it didn't. Like, but I, reflect, care. I guess reflects what we mentioned before about the IB for that, like good well, music. You want yeah. music that you like? Yeah, and I don't. I, it's a, it's not a. It's more of a label. I love it, you know. I do the vinyls and stuff, and it's it's not really a. On my agenda, if it if it if it goes high on people, I don't really give a fuck. I just yeah. want I want people to play it, or I just want to look back and go, "That was a good EP." That you know. Do you what think I mean? with so? Back That's why I only do. Sorry to cut you off. I only do five, six a year, me, because I don't want to have that like release schedule oh we've got to do two a month and all that i think that's so this, this, that's actually what my question was going to be because it's going to say there's lots of some labels put something out weekly like you, i'm not going to name no but way. they whack it out it's weekly ridiculous. and as soon as it for me as soon as something's out it's done it's do done. you know what i mean like it, if you look at someone like inner visions they play the tracks for two years before and then as yeah. soon as it's out they're on to the next thing yeah, and for course. me i think that's the only way you can now make a tune stand the test stand, of time yeah. you well, like the new ep i made it i started that i dropped it last year dc 10 at circle local like in like i think it was like late late september and it's just come out now you know what i mean it's like but you know it's it's if i do six releases a year i've generally got them but I'm ahead now. I know what I'm playing. I know what's going to go to like at least March next but year, this, you know? This, but this is, this, there's also now with like iOS, like groups like that where it's identifying music, there's this first for these tracks and this first that everyone yeah. wants to know. Yeah. So I think like the beauty of people playing records was always that it was so hard to, hard to, to get, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. And if you wanted that record, you had to really dig it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that approach sort of is the, the way you have to combat the 21st century approach yeah, to music yeah, isn't it yeah Massive you have to it, get it's so throw away now you mm. know what i mean and like i've also been doing like love hurts um with me and the uh, jansons and we do like just for our releases we do vinyl only white label and um with the, we're on the third one now and they've sold out in pre-sale you know like we only released 500 copies the sold out in pre-sale and like i don't like the whole discog things because i think that's a bit of a combo they're going for like 150 quid on yeah. discogs immediately and it's good to create that sort of like um lack you yeah. know what i mean so people want it more do you know what i mean and i'm also going to start doing um uh, releasing the in the next month or two um four three two black on black so it's going to be like just black vinyl with the like i've got like a matte black pyramid and i'm just going to do like a couple of years of just like really cool like remixes and really like underground electronics so, or um let's talk about uh different locations to party is there somewhere that you like is fucking that's the next level place like a country where where do you like to go and party is there somewhere that really stands out for you or party wise um i love going to party in berlin because it's always like a quality one amsterdam for me now it seems to be in Europe, the coolest place to party at the minute. There's so many different diverse venues. It gets backed up by the government. Even it's just you go to like, ADEs, it's like you go to parties and you think, what? How the fuck did the managers like? Yeah. It was like, in London, you just be no way, mate. That space is not available for a rave. But then it's really good to go to ones that aren't developed yet. You know, like parts of South America, parts of Asia, because even parts of like you know like Romania and like Croatia and that, they're, they're not they've not been ruined by the the money yet. You know, like back to like when i started coming to london all the time what's it like what's happening in hackney Mick? shoreditch was basically it was like 
it absolutely caused you, you know what I mean? It was a total dump. It was rough as hell. And it was like, that's why it got big because all the art and music people went and they'd done like, they created a culture there. So that's what happened. People came and bought over there to bought houses. And then all of a sudden, the, the all these posh flats and businesses popped up and they shut down the clubs and the art cafes and stuff. That was what made the place big in the first place, you know what that's I mean? The, so This is it. You mentioned Amsterdam. There seems to be an understanding that nightlife is integral to to the city. It's what generates income. Yeah, they're, well, they're appreciative, yeah, appreciative of it. But over in the UK, there seems to be... That we, I don't think we've got to grips with that. Well, no, it's, it, there's two reasons I've looked into that. One, they haven't just got the grips of it. It's semi-subsidised like uh, subsidized by the government. Do you know that's why there's so many festivals? They subsidise a lot of the promoters and help them with, like rents for stuff and rates and stuff you know that's why there's a, a festival every single week in amsterdam that you wouldn't get that in london they wouldn't like oh we'll subsidize this rave they see raves is like oh that's problem so but it's not if p people need that sort of outlet and they need that culture in your city and and do you know what i mean and, like if people are just drinking in bars or whatever there'll be like a lot more violence and stuff than people just going out and raving and also what's happening with london it's so full of money right that Basically, raving or clubs aren't really a profitable use of buildings. So even some of the owners of the buildings are like, I'll just sell it to this corporation and they'll make office blocks and I'll make a load of money and get out of it. You know what I mean? So in Amsterdam, it's not seen like that. And it's not as like London's the most expensive city, developed city in the world. You know, the city, the business, the corporations have took over it. You know what I mean? So if you've got any bit of space in London, like you might have had that space for ages. And its value is And then the value just of, trebles yeah. off more. You just, like, you, a lot of people think, oh, fuck this, I'll take the money. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? If you cut, sometimes you can't blame them. If you're, you can't if you're a club exactly. operating yeah, on a loss. And the last thing is that you've got this, this basic lottery ticket just that's just been developed. Do you know what I mean? You, you know, like, they're going to just say, like, oh, I'll take the money and I run. Mean, it, with COVID-19, it's obviously stopped everything, put it on hold. Do you think this might allow for like a rebalancing of lineups? Like you've mentioned South America, they're not spoiled for choice. How, do you think that's going to change the way things are booked over here? Less one hour sets? Yeah, more? well, I, I mean, I, I hope so in one sense, because um, it, it's like, you know, this 10 DJs and lineup, it's not good for any, well, it's good for DJs in a way, like <laughs> it is good for us, but like, it's like the promoters are overstretching themselves. And actually, if they do the math, really, they need to like, check themselves on that because some of the overbooking and you don't realize is, uh, is people go for a certain dg or maybe it's two and then they're filling it full of djs that are wicked djs but they're not selling any tickets i know that yeah. as a promoter you know what i mean they don't sell tickets some of these djs and the wicked djs there's no disrespect to them but then there's promoters really over like stretching their margin to the point where like you know they can lose their ass in in a heartbeat you know what i mean and um so and then then there's like everyone's getting an hour set it's like well what's that you know it's bad for the dj because they can't express themselves and sometimes people are going for the lineup and the night they haven't isn't that good you know what i mean but really. this, i think this is the, this is it i think there's a time and a place for it like if you look at some of these big parties where the lineups are stacked that's well it, it, like where our project places like this in manchester mm -hmm. those those are the you're almost your gateways that's yeah. how people get into yeah, yeah, so yeah, there, yeah. there is a time and a place for that but I think as you get more into your music, you'd much rather see someone for longer. Yeah, and get to see yeah. what it's all about. Like, take mate. people like Villa Lobos, like they're f they're famous for Long these sets. eight hour sets. Yeah. Craig Richards, the same sort of, of thing. I mean, that's what I was trying try to do a lot more. You know, that's what I wanted to do with him. Um, four three two, and I do an all night long series. You know, in smaller clubs, so they can just like afford it. You know. And I like to do it. I have a better time. Do you know what I mean? I, I've I've played for twenty two hours once, mate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you can really like learn how to DJ properly. And I cut my teeth in Ibiza. You know, like through after parties. That's how I started like becoming a better DJ. And I remember having a certain sound, and you go to an afters, and because Paris started and before that, you know, I just went to every single every single after party, and the. Uh, basically well, played and then you end up like playing with like you know, I could pay for everyone with, like some mad Spanish resident the Luciano or, like to, to a Seth to like it, you know like David David there Jamie just and you realize shit I haven't got a record for that you know what I mean like what they put on theirs is wicked as well and I was thinking I, so yeah I just learned like look, everything minimal disco house tribal you know you're like because it's all some wicked stuff and everything and well I think it's do you I don't like your note better than me but 
It's like uh, there's got to be, you've got to imperative to be like to be able to educate as well. You can't people can't just turn up and expect one thing as well. There's got to be an yeah, element of yeah. you. You at the end of the day, you're the person digging through all these tracks. You want to yeah. go there and sort of change Clearly. some people's minds. I as mean, well it's changed a lot. I mean, even the last five to six years, you know what I mean? It's changed a lot where, like, you know, techno DJs play, like, house tracks as well and, like, they play more, even some disco, you know, speed it up and what have you. But, like, it's still, like, there's still a lot of people that like, you stay in your lane, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They, they can't find a way to put a track on with. I think people expect me to just do stuff like that, you would, know? Would you I say that's best. because, would you say then, or describe it like, you don't overthink. I guess you're quite relaxed when you're playing. Yeah, I you know, don't not, not like, I just feel it how it goes. Do you know and what I mean? Do you think that can cause an issue then? If some people, if you're quite stiff in the booth, and well, you're no, I just it. think, I just think, I just think. More, you got to remember when you get to a certain level, people come to see you for that reason. Do you know what I mean? Don't get us wrong. Like you might go to some places and that you know you go some parts of Italy, and I'm not just gonna whack on loads of garage or disco yeah, or like cause... some like mad like you know like electro clash tracks. You know what I mean? Because like you'll lose the crowd. You know what I mean? Like, but they're starting to get like different. So like the the certain the certain zones at your place. So if you go in certain parts of you're playing Belgium, you're gonna play a bit tougher. You know what I mean? If you if you play in London, you can play a lot more like, like you know like even editor grime and bass music so do you think it's quite important then to actually understand what where you're going understand a bit of the history of the the culture because like you said they're belgium belgium used to have a very very hard they pushing the techno scene years ago Mm -hmm. and so like if if you don't understand the sort of heritage of that culture that can that can be detrimental well uh, well, more than it yeah completely and you'll learn that after one gig when the fucking crowd goes flat yeah. and you're like thinking shit, you know, like <laughs> or when I first went and started playing in Italy and I was like, my biggest tracks were like warm up for them, you know, and you people in the crowd going, Come on, come on, <laughs> come on, well, what is this? What's this? And I'm thinking, fuck, I've not got nothing for this, do you know what I mean? <laughs> so you learn quick, you know what I mean? But like also, more than anything, how I work is I like I work on energy, mate. I I, I I don't just see a crowd die or if I, I feel it to be wrong in my heart, you know what I mean? Within three tracks, I'll, and that doesn't mean I'm going to like put something on that I don't believe in, but this is the, the ethos I try to work with. Within the realms of my set or my collection of music, I'm going to try and give that crowd the best experience I can give them, do you know what I mean? And if that means like, right, like you're high in, at first you might be like, if it's a n- new place or whatever, you're, you're like, you know, you're fishing a little bit, you're hiring stuff out, see what catches, you know what Testing I mean? Testing the like, water. Testing the water, see, like, if you don't get them w- straight away and you think, shit, this, like, this isn't going the way I thought it was going to, you try a couple of little moves out and you think, right, oh, right, they're into that. Like, the other day when I was playing in Zagreb, I started putting some, like, like bass garage stuff on and normally that goes down over there. It's a little bit like... A bit like, oh, what we yeah, doing? Yeah, <laughs> but I swear, I played two, like, tracks I like playing. It was one of them was like a... It's like a mad like jungle sort of track and like a garage one and it went off just as soon as I heard that bass line and me had a few pals with and me this girl and she goes fuck me the love in the garage <laughs> over here aren't they? And she was like laughing because she's from London she went I did not expect that so I went like with that for like 20 minutes and it just went off you know but then you know then I went I went back and really because I don't want to just play like a load of stuff like that you know what I mean but um, all right then. So thanks for thanks for doing this feature behind the headphones. Is there what's cu- what before we cut off? What's been coming up for you? What's next on the sort of release gender gigs coming up? Have you got anything? Um, I've got you know I, one thing I've been lucky about, which I've not seen many people DJ. I've I've managed to get some gigs together. <laughs> yeah, like I played Croatia last week, and I'm doing a fe- like a mini little festival in Croatia this week. Yeah, I leave Wednesday, do like two gigs over there, and then I'm off to. Um, this I've I've played in well I was playing in Rome they put it back now I've played in Rome the eleventh but I'm doing um, Sicily and I'm doing uh, Zurich so, so UK compared so to a lot of, <laughs> yeah, compared to some DJs I mean I, I was agent. I was like <laughs> I had eighteen gigs this month uh, like planned you know that which all got cancelled and sixteen last month but I haven't said that. It's nice to have the rest. I mean, it's fucking probably saved most a lot of DJs' lives. You know what I mean? This because like it kicks fuck out you the yeah. side. You know what I mean? And 
I'm actually like been managed to like lose all the weight, train, work on shit and like that like, you just don't get the chance to do, you know what I mean? So it has been nice. You don't want it to go on too long because it's just kind of yeah, like you need to do something. Well, you, you need to do something at the end of the day. I feel like I feel like you've retired. I was having a laugh with it, screaming the other day, and it Archie Amel was going. Remember when we used to be DJ when we were younger? <laughs> it seems like a world away. It's like you know, uh, you'd be like talking to your kids and all that. Going, I used to play records, me man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you and back, in the, ra- back in the day, I used to play music, and that's what it feels like. That after even like a few months, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you haven't got it's like you finding shit to do with your life, do you know what I mean? It's like we are like you're retired. You know, like, I'm gonna I wanna get them things done yeah, that I've never had a chance I've never had a chance to work on, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go and learn golf or cut something like that. Cut the grass, yeah. I had a lawn relayed and all that and shit like that. It's fucking mental. So but uh, as for like where the gigs have been like, they're coming back, you know, like I mean I, when I played Zagreb there, I think I was the first I was one of the first stages that post like a decent Tip, yeah, uh, gig out because I was just getting messages off all the days going how did he get did that did you get sorted? any bad reaction from that was nah. it, oh, nah, no, it no way man at the end of the day like it's like in that country it's fine I got a test before, and I don't currently want to come out. And I get, a, I, I get a bore test, mate. You yeah. get like a blood test. It, you prick it, and it gives you the answer straight away whether you've had it, whether you've got antibodies, or whether you've got it. And it's like I've just got a load of them in the house now. So we so. should be wearing masks or not? Yeah, no, no. I'm sweet. <laughs> no, I didn't. Ha- I didn't. Ha- I, I wish I'd had it actually, so I'd have some antibodies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, I didn't get it. Um, like most people I know. Um, All right then. Um, what let's finish off on what music's coming out for you yep. in the next couple of months and then go from there um, yeah I've got a release out this week this Friday um, yes yeah, so what is it now you never work out what fucking what day, day is it <laughs> what day Tuesday isn't it yeah that's what's meant about this COVID and it's just every day just belts into the next isn't it? it's a pain in the arse so I've got out on Friday um, coming out in uh, all like platforms and it's a uh, my new EP, Bad Boy in the Tallow 80s, and I've got an Enzo Zaragoza remix. And also, I've got um, another, fir- well, that's in a couple of months on my label again. First EP me and Jamie have done together ever, which is really cool. And and also got a Love Herds vinyl only release coming in the next month or two as well. Wicked. All right, thanks very much for having us, Thanks Richie. for coming, mate. Cheer. Sorry for the delay. I left his old tape for 20 minutes, didn't I? <laughs> no I one watching. needs to know about yeah, that. <laughs> I was watching the bloody Harvey Weinstein carry on. But um, <laughs> thanks for the professional setup in my living room. Well, <laughs> I'm sure I get some social media posts of that as well. I look well, I look well pro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you for watching this feature behind the headphones of Richie Ahmed. Um, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel anywhere along the somewhere on this screen. And we'll be back again next week with our next feature. Hello, how's it going everybody? I'm Richie Ahmed and you've been listening to RRP TV.